a swirling shoal of giant alien spaceships feeding amongst swirling plankton blooms in the midnight seas. Versus, quite simply, the creepiest animal we have ever seen on Deadly. Which of these two scenes do you think will win our Deadly Showdown? My name's Steve Batchel and this is my Deadly Showdown. It's a chance for me to relive some of the greatest animal encounters I've ever had through my career and to put those animals head to head in a battle royale, a proper showdown. And this time it's a showdown between my greatest jaw on the floor moments. So who are our contenders? Well, first up is one of the most beautiful moving animals in the seas, the manta ray, but not just one. So finding and diving with manta rays normally involves finding cleaning stations where they come in to have parasites and bits of dead skin picked off them. It's a very sinister thing getting into the water when it's dark and moody and spooky. It feels like something you shouldn't be doing, jumping into the sea at night. But there are some places where you can drop down to the bottom and put light up into the darkened nighttime seas. And that encourages artificial plankton blooms. So you get enormous amounts of plankton, which is what manta rays feed on. And if you're lucky, the mantas follow. Well, I'm down in the darkness and I can't see anything as yet. Though the water's quite clear. You can see that it's filled with what looks like snow. And most of this is actually tiny, tiny animals, plankton. And the creature we're looking for feasts on hundreds of thousands of these mini animals every day. I can already make out some strange shapes in the darkness. Oh my goodness. And almost immediately, the mantas followed. There's something very special about the way a manta ray moves. This is a relative of the sharks. It is in the same group, and effectively it is just like a shark that's been flattened. But the way they move is completely different. They fly through the water using their fins like wings. I didn't expect anything like this! I thought we might see four or five, but there must be 30. These sinister looking animals have been known as sea devils. They get this name from their horn shaped head fins, which they use to funnel plankton into their cavernous mouths. And the mantas are feasting! Oh my goodness! They nearly took my head off! And this isn't phytoplankton, it's not plants! It is zooplankton! Tiny baby animals! Thousands of litres of seawater are driven through each manta's mouth each day. The plankton is then filtered through sponge-like tissues called gill rakers. They may be relatives of the sharks, but they're utterly harmless to humans. Mantas are social animals and have the largest brain of any fish. They use their extended pectoral fins to flap, fly and glide through the water. It's one of the most hypnotic ways of getting about in nature. So who is contender number two? Well, this is a really sinister beast. It's the giant Scolopendra.
we just had a spot of real deadly 60 luck. We've just been told that some locals have actually found a giant scolopendra in their back garden. So we're going to go and have a look now. Scolopendras are a kind of centipede, but this one is a beast. The giant scolopendra can be 30 centimetres long. That is the distance from my elbow to my fingers. No it's way. A good thing. No way. That's enormous. Well, just gracias. OK, I'd rather take this away from his family before I take it out, because this is an animal that certainly could do a child an enormous amount of damage. So just take it away from the house a little bit. Um, I have to admit, I'm a little bit shaky about this. Um, I've handled Scolopendra many, many times in the past, but nothing of this kind of size. This is absolutely formidable. Look at the size of it. That is just extraordinary. It's incredibly strong. Harder to handle, certainly, than any snake Look at that, look at the strength of it. Oh, it's, it's actually just sunk its claws right into the thumb of the glove. And I'm very, very glad that these are really, look at that. It's almost puncturing the leather. In fact, I'm not entirely sure that these gloves are strong enough. Whoa, that is a true living monster. So this is Scolopendra gigantea, the largest species of centipede found on Earth. It can get to be nearly 30 centimetres in length, which is as long as my forearm. And at the front of the head there, you can see those curved claws. They're actually adapted legs, but they're linked to a venom gland, which means that they can inject an absolutely ferocious toxin and overpower even quite decent sized mammals. Look at the breadth of the body on this thing. It's absolutely phenomenal. And I'm actually having to cling on with quite a lot of force because if I didn't, well, it would be off. And there is no doubt that if this actually got to exposed skin, it would definitely bite. And if it did, it probably wouldn't kill me, but I really don't want to take that chance. Wow. This centipede was totally unhandleable. It was stronger than any snake that I think I've ever handled before. And I honestly was properly, properly creeped out. And I will always remember it as one of the moments where I just could not wait to get that centipede back in the bucket. <laughs> you horrible thing. You horrible, I hate you. Can I put him back in the bucket <laughs> now, please? <laughs> <laughs> Oh, holy moly. <laughs> so who's going to win? Well, in terms of jaw on the floor moments, you cannot beat those manta rays. Seeing even one is an opportunity of a lifetime. To see 30 or 40 at night feeding around you, bumping you out of the way, unforgettable. But what do you think? Which one would you have chosen? It's, it's the mantis, right? I mean, I've got that one. Head to BBC Earth Kids and subscribe to get lots more deadly showdowns and plenty more deadly content as well. But for now, all the very best from me, Stevie B. Ah.